Hello, I'm Andrew and welcome to Top 10 Tips for XCOM 2. XCOM 2 is a great game, so hopefully these tips can just get you a little bit started off the ground. I'm going to try and avoid any overt story spoilers for you, but bear in mind I will mention some of the game mechanics. So, number one, cover destruction and falling damage. In XCOM 2, pretty much everything on the map can be destroyed one way or another with grenades, grenade launcher rounds, mini rocket launchers. The number of ways you can actually destroy cover is almost innumerable. And in addition to being able to actually do damage to an enemy with the explosion, if you destroy the floor from under them at the same time, they will then take falling damage, which can be a nice way of adding a little bit of extra damage to your explosions. However, just be careful not to shoot the floor from under you. That can end badly. Number two, turrets and falling. So kind of expanding on number one, turrets are a new enemy you will find in XCOM 2 which are deployed by Advent to defend certain positions that they don't want you getting into. These turrets can be quite well armored and they have a pretty decent gun on them. And while you can hack them to get rid of their firepower to turn them to your side, one of the easier and more surefire ways of killing them is with a well-placed grenade that can destroy the floor from under them. Normally these turrets are placed on elevated positions like buildings or train cars. If you destroy the floor from under them, they will fall and instantly die. So when you see a turret and you need it gone immediately with a surefire method, just lob a grenade and let it fall and just bring it down. Number three, the Gorilla Tactic School. The Gorilla Tactic School in XCOM 2 is a building that you can build relatively early on in the campaign. It operates very much like the Officer Training School from XCOM 1 and allows you to get a load of passive upgrades to your squad. These upgrades include things like an increased squad size, and even more increased squad size, managing you bring our squad up to 6 rather than the starting 4. A lot of these buffs are really, really, really quite good, and if you have the entire of Asia covered with a significant amount of relays, you can actually then halve the cost of everything in the Guerrilla Tactics School. I would definitely recommend getting this as one of your first buildings, probably in one of the top two corner slots out of your uh, 3x4 matrix that you get to put your buildings in, because it is very useful, and being able to increase your squad early allows you to get a lot more firepower, a lot more people leveling up because they'll be on missions. It is an important building to get super early if you can. Number four, the workshop. So in XCOM 2, you have a limited supply of engineers. These engineers are used to build things, to staff certain buildings that need them, or to be able to clear debris. Now with the workshop, if you put one engineer into the workshop building, you can then create two gremlins. These gremlins basically act as engineers in any adjacent room. They have to be adjacent, left, right, up or down, not diagonally. For this reason, I recommend you put it in the center of the map because you can then put a second engineer in with an upgrade and get another two gremlins. This allows you to put a gremlin in above, below, to the left and to the right of the workshop. It allows you to basically increase your engineer force very early on for the cost of two engineers getting effectively four engineer slots. Number five, building and clearing. So in XCOM 2, you can assign an engineer to a building to build it slightly faster. You can also assign an engineer to places like the Proving Ground to build them slightly faster. Note that both of these projects will continue even if you don't have an engineer assigned there. However, if you assign an engineer to a debris area in your ship that would allow you to then, once you've cleared it, build a room there, this will not happen unless you've got an engineer assigned. So, if you want some extra resources by clearing debris, or if you're just not wanting something done as soon as possible and you don't really mind having to staff an engineer in the Proving Ground, consider applying an engineer to just a bit of debris in your hold. That way you can get it done and you can get a nice resource boost while you're at it. Number six, early armor. One of the things that I definitely recommend researching very early on is the Predator armor. The Predator armor gives your troops quite a bit more survivability, and this means you'll get a slight snowball effect in that your troops who would otherwise die because they take lethal wounds would otherwise just take wounds that would hurt them a fair amount. It'll also mean that troops that would otherwise be out of action with injuries won't be out for as long. It means that these troops who would otherwise be not getting any experience because they'd be dead or injured would be earning even more experience by going on even more missions. And this way you actually retain those troops who would otherwise be out of action. I recommend getting Predator armor me relatively early on. It's not particularly a long project to do in the scheme of things, and it's actually not that expensive to deploy, and all of your troops get it. Get the Predator armor early on. Number seven, loot. XCOM 2 adds a mechanic whereby some enemies, when you kill them, will drop loot. This loot can be destroyed if you kill them with an explosive, but if you kill them with a normal weapon fire or if you kill them with like a melee attack, they will sometimes drop this loot. This loot can be things like weapon upgrades, but it can also be something called an Illyrium Core. And this Illyrium Core is the core technology used in a lot of Proving Game projects, including a lot of the experimental cool weapons, grenades, or armor. I recommend you trying to pick these up as much as you can. There is in fact a Guerrilla Tactics School upgrade that allows them to drop twice as much loot. This will be very important. Alirium cores will be probably the limiting factor on some of your Proving Ground projects, so I recommend you do try and get these whenever you can. Number eight, 
Mimic Beacons. So, after researching a certain project, you manage to get the ability to make Mimic Beacons. These act as one-time use grenades that you can use once on a mission, and when you throw them, they will create a holographic image of an XCOM operative. Any alien that can see this hologram must shoot at it. They have no choice. This means that if you are running away, if you've got soldiers in the open, you can just throw a Mimic Beacon and it forces the enemy to target that hologram. They have no choice. Mimic Beacons are amazing. If you get caught out, Mimic Beacon. If you need to run away, Mimic Beacon. If you just maybe don't want to get shot at for a turn, Mimic Beacon. Mimic Beacon OP. Use them as much as possible because Firaxis will be nerfing the hell out of them. Number 9. Do not fear the Avatar Project. So the Avatar Project Tracker, when it gets full, instead of just losing the game, you actually have about 25 days, during which time you must destroy facility or you lose the game. So if the Avatar Project Tracker does get particularly high, don't worry, there is a way to fix that and you will have time provided you can get to a facility. So don't threat about stopping the Avatar Project Tracker if you've got other things you'd rather be doing. And number 10, UFOs. If you get the chance to stop a Hunt Avenger mission by a UFO, do try and stop that. Because without going into too many minor story details, it's bad. And kind of a bonus one, number 11, Overwatch Concealment Trap. You may have seen some YouTubers and streamers, including me, using an Overwatch Concealment Trap designed to be able to trigger Advent or Aliens on their turn so that they walk into an exposed person, see them, run for cover, and get shot at, basically getting a three turn of shooting. This has been patched with a day one patch. Do not do this. Do not do this. What will happen now is if they see someone exposed, they will probably choose to take a three shot. If they take a three shot, they A, may kill you because you're not behind cover, and B, they won't be moving. And if they don't move, they won't probably trigger your Overwatch shots. So, enemies will shoot at you. There is a patch to fix that because Firaxis was paying attention. Hope you enjoyed this list of things to help you get started in XCOM 2. And if you've got any more feedback or things that you think is a particularly good tip, do leave it below if you've liked it. Please do remember to like, and if you think it might help someone out, share it around. But until next time, I've been Andrew Lysium, and stay shiny.